So yesterday I posted a poll on Twitter, uh, and I used this quote, uh, it is necessary to reasonably regulate excessively high incomes and encourage high income people and enterprises to return more to society. And then I offer four choices on who might have said it. More than 2,000 people took the poll. 36% said it was Bernie Sanders. 16% President Biden. 32%, by the way, got it right. Uh, and they attributed these comments to President Xi of China. This is part of his new war on the wealthy there. Joining me now from the Bonson Group, David Bonson. And David, you know, you actually predicted such a war, talked about it in your book, uh, about Elizabeth Warren last year and the election and the outcome. You know, I, I think it's really amazing when people can't distinguish comments coming from the communist Chinese president uh, and a, a powerful U.S. senator. Yes, I guess we have to decide, Charles, which is worse, that people assumed it was the U.S. senator when it was actually the communist Chinese head, as opposed to something that the U.S. senator said that we assume is the communist Chinese head. Uh, both seem to me to be very problematic, and both seem to be happening quite a bit in the rhetoric of some of these very progressive, both senators like Elizabeth Warren, who you mentioned, and even some of these squad members in the House, it's incredibly un-American. And, and it's un-American for a reason that we need to be thoughtful about. It's not the politics. It's the moral ideology and how they think about economics, that demonization of the wealthy, the concept of achievement, of productivity is frowned upon, that there has to be an oppressed people, this zero-sum fallacy, mm -hmm forgetting about growing the wealth pie. We need to start teaching young people proper economics and that it's rooted in the dignity of mankind that says producing things is a good thing, not demonizing people who are successful. Yeah, and to me also, David, it seems that they've given up on the notion that we can continue to grow, that and somehow they believe or lost faith in the ability of the average American to pull themselves up by the bootstrap and create the next Microsoft. That's just, you know, another, I agree with everything you said. I would just add that. I do want to bring up last time you were on because we had a great conversation about taxes. You handicapped a lot of things for us. Uh, now, another problem, though, for this economy are, are regulations, and we haven't talked about that. Apparently, through August 13th, the administration now has put on regulatory actions, $17 billion worth. Here's the kicker, almost 41 million paperwork hours. What are your thoughts on that? What, what's the impact of something like that? Well, I want to add to that, that regulation, that kind of paperwork, it is a subsidy to bigger businesses because bigger businesses have more resources to handle more administrative needs, tax and legal. It, mm -hmm. As a percentage of the P&L, it's the small business bogged down with administrative regulation that can be fatal. And so you not only have the lost productivity to all this nonsense, all this red tape, all this paperwork, but, but it's a, a, a really bad thing that is disproportionately bad for smaller businesses. And so I don't want right. to lose sight of that. I think basically Great the lower point. regulation is very important to the economy. Yeah. I got a minute to go. I got to ask you about oil. I know you're big on MLPs. You've done very well with them, but is it getting to oversold territory now? Oh, I think it is on the midstream side, and I think you want to be watching some of these producers, too. I don't think that's because the oil price itself is problematic. Uh, you, you know, really here in the low to mid-60s, that might even be kind of the sweet spot for the producers, because in the mid-70s where we were, it starts to dampen consumption a little bit. Mm -hmm. The important thing is that they can make a lot of money at oil into the low and mid-60s now. Uh, they don't need the same break-even points. Our problem is production, back to my moral point a moment ago. We need to be producing mm -hmm. more oil. We need more customers for our oil. America should be buying its oil from America. And, and America should be selling its oil to the rest of the world. It's better for the environment, and it's certainly better for our geopolitical interest and our economic well-being. Well and that sounds like the ultimate win-win, but I don't know politically. Obviously, when, when our administration is asking OPEC to pump up their production, there's definitely a misalignment there. David, thank you so much. Always appreciate those conversations.